Last time, I introduced a bunch of different drag and drop concepts, such as starting a drag and drop and handling a bunch of different drag events, but let's say you want to do something whenever one of those drag events fires. Now, you might not want to do that in your view. You might want to do that in something like a view model if you're dealing with an MVVM application. So that is exactly what we're going to be demonstrating in this demo. I have this set up exactly as I just explained. So whenever I drop something on this canvas, I want to do some kind of database save. But as I said, I don't want to have all that database code right here. So let's introduce what we left off with last time. So we have two of these canvas views, one on each side, and we can drag and drop between these views. But for this demo, all we're going to do is just have a single canvas view. So everything's just going to be happening on a single canvas. And let's just have this canvas take up the entire size of the page. So what I want to do is drag and drop around. And when I drop, do some kind of database save, saving the location of this blue rectangle to a database. So I'm not actually going to do the database interaction because that's definitely outside the scope of this video. I have other videos on database interaction, but we are going to stub that out and just focus on the dragging and dropping. So this is going to be an MVVM approach. So I'm going to start off by creating a view models folder. So view models, and I'll create a view model in here, the canvas view model. And rather than implementing iNotify property changed and implementing a bunch of MVVM infrastructure, I'm going to use my good old NuGet package that takes care of all that for me. So this is singleton Sean, and I think it's MVVM essentials. So it's MVVM essentials WPF by singleton Sean. I have a video where I go over everything inside of this package, but it's just going to take care of the basic MVVM stuff for us. And that includes a view model base. So we can inherit from that in our view model. And my goal for this application is whenever I do a drop on this canvas, I want to execute some kind of command on my canvas view model. And that command will do the quote unquote database saving for us, even though we're just going to stub that out. So what I want on here is an I command and we'll call this the save rectangle command. And let's import I command and we can make this read only by getting rid of the setter. And we'll set up this command in the constructor. And to do that, we are going to have to create a save rectangle command class. So back in our project, let's add a new folder over here for commands. I'm a big fan of class commands, so we're going to continue that approach here. And the command we have is the save rectangle command. And this will inherit from command base. That's another part of my MVVM essentials package. And let's implement that abstract class. And all we have to do is implement this execute method. And this will simply get called whenever the command gets executed. So this command base takes care of a lot of the boilerplate associated with commands. So all I want to do here for now is just pop a message box and we'll just say successfully saved the rectangle. And now back in my canvas view model, we can import this command. And now I'm going to have to configure my application startup. So I'll get rid of the startup URI and head into my app.zamba.cs and we're going to override on startup. We'll set our main window to a new main window. And the reason we're doing this is because we have to set the data context of the main window to a new canvas view model. And this is essential for our MVVM application in order for all the bindings to work. Let's import canvas view model and then we will show the main window. So now we got the view model part of the setup. Now let's head into our canvas view. So I want to execute that command whenever I do the drop. So we're going to have to get a reference to that command inside of this canvas view. And to do that, we are going to have a dependency property and we'll call this the rectangle drop command. It's going to be an I command. The type of the owner is going to be our canvas view. And by default, the value will be null. And now that we have this dependency property, we can bind to this dependency property using our save rectangle command. So we're going to bind this command to the dependency property. And that is done in the main window. So here in our main window, we know our data context is the canvas view model. And this canvas view model has our command. So we can set the rectangle drop command as a binding to the save rectangle command, which is on our data context, which is our canvas view model. So now since we have this binding, we know that in the canvas view that this rectangle drop command property is going to be our save rectangle command. So now we simply just have to execute this command whenever we drop on the canvas. So we will take that rectangle drop command property. And if it is not null, so we do have to null check this because by default, it is null. So null check. If it's not null, then we will execute 
and we can just pass null as the parameter. We don't use that parameter. And let's put a breakpoint here and make sure this all works. So now move around and drop. So we hit this canvas drop handler. We're going to execute our rectangle drop command. And we can already see that this is bound to our save rectangle command. So we should get our message box. And we do indeed get that message box. So that is all good. So we can handle any kind of drag drop event with commands that are defined on our view model. So the main idea here is that we're turning our canvas drop handler into a command handler. And that is much more cooperative with MVVM applications using commands because we can bind to these commands. So really the pattern that you might see yourself using a lot is defining a dependency property and then simply executing that command whenever you want to handle any of these drag events. So for example, we might have a rectangle remove command that gets executed whenever we leave the canvas with our rectangle. So we would have something like a dependency property up here, the rectangle remove command. It's an I command again, the inner class is the canvas view and by default will be null and then simply execute that command. Make sure you null check it and we can pass in null as the parameter. So commands are one way that we can pass this drag and drop data back up to our view model. Another way is with two way bindings. So a good way to demonstrate this is maybe in the save rectangle command, I would want to get the location of the rectangle. So I would want to get the X and Y location and that is denoted by this canvas.left and canvas.top. So ultimately, I want the left and top position in my canvas view model so that I can eventually access it in my save rectangle command. So we're going to have some properties on this view model. The first is going to be the X position. So we'll just call this X and I use my prop change snippet here, which automatically scaffolds out one property changed for us so that our view is reactive. We'll have another one. And this one is going to be the Y. And now I want to access these properties in my save rectangle command. So I can just pass in this view model instance to that command. Let's update the constructor over there. And now that I have the canvas view model in this command, I can get the X and Y. So I'll put that X and Y position here. So successfully save the rectangle to position and then string interpolate this with a dollar sign in front. And we'll get the X then do a comma and then plop in the Y as well. So now we have the infrastructure we need inside of our view model. Now we just need to bind these properties to our view. And we actually don't need any custom dependency properties for this. We can simply set bindings on canvas.left and canvas.top. So canvas.left is going to be a binding to the X property on our view model. And canvas.top is going to be a binding to the Y property. And I think these are two-way bindings by default. We're going to have to check. So let me put a breakpoint on these setters to make sure that that data gets propagated back up to our view model. So we know the bindings did work from the view model to the view because by default, X and Y are zero. And we can see our blue rectangle is at zero, zero. So let's try moving. And it's not sending the data back up to our view model. So let's try and make these two-way bindings. So we set the mode to two-way and try this again. There we go. So we hit the breakpoints. So we are getting that data passed back up to our view model. So now if I drop somewhere, there we go. We get the position in our message box. So the last thing I want to handle is this rectangle remove command. Let's actually bind a command to this dependency property. So we're going to create a command over here. We'll call this the delete rectangle command. So inherit from command base, implement the abstract class. And right off the bat, I'm going to get my canvas view model on here because we're going to need that in a little bit. So just get that through the constructor. And for now, we'll do nothing in the command, but we are going to want to set up that command on the view model. So let's get a delete rectangle command and instantiate that in the constructor. And last but not least, set up the binding on our canvas view. So the rectangle remove command is going to be a binding to our delete rectangle command on the view model. And now breakpoint just to make sure. So I leave the canvas and the command does get executed. So now in the delete rectangle command, I want to actually get the name of the rectangle that was deleted. So in our case, that is red rectangle, even though I think our actual rectangle is blue, but we'll just roll with it. So I want to get this name in the delete rectangle command so that I know which rectangle got deleted. So we could pass this as a parameter to the command, but I really do not enjoy using command parameters because then we have to type check it. So I think again, the best alternative is to use a two way binding. So we're going to have another property on our canvas view model. So let's do a prop change. And the data we want from the view is the rectangle name. So we'll have a rectangle name property. And you might be thinking that we can just bind 
to the rectangle's name. So we get a binding to rectangle name on our view model and have that as two way. But name actually isn't a dependency property, so we can't bind to it. And plus, we have to actually set the rectangle name here. So a binding wouldn't necessarily make sense. So we're going to leave this as red rectangle. So how are we going to send the rectangle's name back to our view model? Well, we're going to have to use our own dependency property. So we're going to have another prop DP here. So that's a Visual Studio snippet. I don't think I mentioned that, but it should be built into Visual Studio. And we're going to call this the remove rectangle name and it's going to be a string the owner class is the canvas view and by default it'll just be string dot empty and actually while we're here if we turn this into framework property metadata then we can set some framework property metadata options and specifically we can set binds two-way by default so our view model is automatically going to receive this property, we don't have to manually specify the mode as two-way. So now the idea of this dependency property is we're gonna set the remove rectangle name here in this drag leave before we execute the command. And then when we actually execute the command, we can get the name of the rectangle that has been removed. So we'll set the remove rectangle name to the name of the element. And actually UI element doesn't have a name property. So I think this has to be a framework element. So yeah, there we go. That works in our case. So we're gonna be setting the remove rectangle name dependency property. And then that is going to update the rectangle name property on our canvas view model. We should call this remove rectangle name just for consistency. And since this property is gonna have the name of the rectangle that was removed, we can get that name in our delete rectangle command. So we'll just throw a message box in here and we will show the remove rectangle name. And now last but not least, let's set up the binding for the remove rectangle name. So then we bind that to the dependency property we created on our view. And that's gonna be done in the main window. So we have a remove rectangle name dependency property binding to the remove rectangle name property on our view model. So now this should all work. So we're gonna go off the screen and there we go. That sets the remove rectangle name to red rectangle. So our property binding is all good. And now we execute the delete rectangle command and we have our remove rectangle name property on the view model that we can show in the message box. So we know what rectangle got removed. And this actually crashes the application because drag and drop and message boxes don't always get along too well. So maybe we'll just comment this out for now. So just to summarize this, you can handle drag drop events by executing commands and that is much more cooperative with MVVM applications. And then if you wanna pass any data associated with those commands, I usually do this with two-way binding dependency properties so we can set our dependency property and that'll propagate up to our view model. And then we can access that data in our command by referencing our view model. So this was a pretty simple demo. All we have is a rectangle moving around on a canvas. So I would like to improve on this in the future and show off something more applicable, such as integrating a list view. But hopefully this sparks some ideas and is something that you can use in your own application. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or enjoy the channel, consider becoming a member. But other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.